tucked away at the southern tip of St. Pete, Florida, Fort DeSoto State Park offers a break from the hustle and bustle for locals and vacationers alike, along with pristine beaches rivaling those of St. Pete Beach to the north and Anna Maria Island to the south. Whether you're into history, camping, fishing, boating, biking, kayaking, kiteboarding, or just relaxing on white, powdery sand beaches, Fort DeSoto may be the perfect getaway for you. Today, we're going to give you a complete tour of the park and show you how we spent a wonderful day in Fort DeSoto. Make sure to watch until the end where we'll show you how we found one of the most beautiful and secluded beach spots in the Tampa Bay area. Fort DeSoto can be accessed by car via the Pinellas Bayway. Cost to enter the park was $5 per car, plus $1.75 in tolls each way from downtown St. Pete. $5, there you go. We found this price to be fairly inexpensive when compared to the cost of parking for an entire day on St. Pete Beach or Treasure Island to the north. There were areas of the park that did not feel busy and parking was plentiful in most spots, despite having visited on a beautiful weekend day. We started our tour of Fort DeSoto by heading to the far east tip of the Key, with plans to work our way west and then north up the Key. It didn't take us long to realize that the east tip of the Key was a hot spot for kite surfing on this warm, windy day. Although the sand at this beach did not compare to some of the beaches we'd see later in the day, we did find this spot to be quiet and relaxing while offering one of the best views of Tampa Bay in the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. On the very east end of Fort DeSoto, there's an area where you're not able to swim due to the currents, but on a windy day, it is great for kite surfing. And you also have a nice view of the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. Before leaving, we also found a nice kayak launch area leading to much calmer waters. After a little more time spent admiring the kite surfers, we were off to our second stop of the day, East Beach. We're here at East Beach on Fort DeSoto. And as you can see, there are a ton of palm trees to set up a hammock if you just want to relax. There's also a shelter area that you can reserve for larger parties. We've actually not been to the beach here before, so we're going to go see what it's like. We enjoyed the beautiful walk through the forest of palm trees on our way to check out the beach. And here is a little more shelly compared to some of the other beaches we've been to recently. While swimming is allowed on East Beach, the water was pretty rough and we spotted only a few swimmers at this beach on our visit. Upon leaving East Beach, we noticed that it also offers bathroom facilities with showers, areas to grill, and a playground making it a great beach for families. Our third stop of the day was Bay Pier. It's located just a quick drive down the road from West Beach, and it's the first beach you'll come to if you turn right at the flag after entering Fort DeSoto. We just arrived here at the pier and unlike the first two stops, this location is quite busy. It took us a while to find parking 
and we got one of the last two spots. I think the reason it's so busy is because not only is it where people go to fish, but it's also where you go to access the ferry to Egmont Key, and also where people with dogs can take their dog to the dog beach or to the dog park. After grabbing one of the last two parking spots, we decided to check out the 500-foot pier, which we found to offer a great view of Tampa Bay and also was a popular fishing spot, even on this windy day. We found that this pier included a bait and tackle shop that also offered a snack bar and some clothes for sale. Once we got off the pier, we checked out the information on the Egmont Key Ferry, which we discovered departs from this pier three times daily. Like West Beach, we also found Bay Pier to offer restroom facilities with showers. Before leaving Bay Pier, we checked out the dog park, along with the path leading to the dog beach to the west of the pier. Just to the west of Bay Pier, we found the canoe and kayak outpost, where visitors can rent canoes, kayaks, and paddleboards. Here you can also access the Fort DeSoto Kayak Trail, a 5.6 mile out and back trail. After stopping by the Canoe and Kayak Outpost, it was time to check out the next stop, the Gulf Pier and Historic Fort. We easily found parking before heading off to tour the fort. Upon arrival at the fort, we learned that the island on which Fort DeSoto is located is actually called Mullet Key, named after the jumping fish, and not the awesome haircut. We decided to start our tour of the fort by hiking to the top to get a view of the thousand foot gulf pier and the neighboring beach. This osprey seemed to be enjoying the view as well. We're here on top of the fort on the southwest corner of the island. And it's a really great viewpoint because the rest of the island is flat. And just behind me is one of the more popular beaches on the island. We're probably gonna check that out a little later, but first we're gonna show you a little more of the fort. Before embarking on our self-guided tour of the fort, we learned that construction of Fort DeSoto on Mullet Key began in 1898 as a result of the United States conflict in Cuba, which led to the Spanish-American War. On April 4, 1900, the military fort was named Fort DeSoto after the Spanish explorer Hernando de Soto. Sorry, Skyler, no climbing the guns. Dang. Fort DeSoto was officially a subpost of Fort Dade located on the neighboring Egmont Key. The fort was finished after the war ended and no hostile shots were ever fired from the four mortars or the two rapid fire guns which were installed at the fort. At one point, the original fort included over 29 buildings which have been destroyed over the years by hurricanes which have blown through. The ruins of the fort remain, however, we found the remaining stone block rooms to offer a nice break from the heat, despite being just a bit creepy. After our tour of the fort, we checked out the snack bar and gift shop, which are located just to the north of the fort. We found that you can also rent beach chairs and umbrellas here, along with bicycles and these seated two-person cycles.
After a quick walk down to the boardwalk to check out the Gulf Pier Beach, we are ready to hit our final stop of the day. After a quick drive to the far north end of Mullet Key, we arrived at North Beach. We were amazed by the amount of parking at the beach, which even on this weekend afternoon was nowhere close to being full. Our arrival at North Beach could not have come soon enough, as we were hot and ready to get our feet in the cool water. We were immediately impressed by the beauty of this beach and the softness of the sand. I want to show you the difference between the sand from East Shore and North Shore. So here on North Shore, the sand is much more fine. You can still find pieces of shell in it, but it's much softer on the North Shore. We soon discover that like East Beach, North Beach is also a popular spot for kite surfing on a windy day. We started the day off at East Shore Beach and we've driven pretty much the whole island and now we're at North Shore Beach. We're really enjoying this beach. The sand's nice and soft. There's a bunch of kite boarders out because it's so windy so we're enjoying watching them. And now that we've had some time to relax we're going to explore the rest of North Shore Beach so come with us to check it out. The walk along the beach was exactly what we were hoping for, as the people quickly became fewer and fewer, and we soon had the beautiful beach nearly all to ourselves. And if you'd like to explore, we would recommend making the trek out here. The farther north that you go, the fewer people you'll see on the beach until you make it to the north end, which is where you'll find a whole bunch of boats and a lot of people who like to have a good time. It's been really hot out here today, so I think it's time to finally get in the water. After a quick dip in the water, we enjoyed the beautiful walk back to the vehicle while planning our next trip to Fort DeSoto. Thank you so much for joining us on our day at Fort DeSoto State Park. Have you visited Fort DeSoto before? If so, let us know what your favorite part of the park is in the comments below. And if we missed anything, let us know that as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let us know. If you're interested in other St. Pete and Tampa Bay area content, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn the notifications on. Thanks for watching!